I'm Daniel Kirk, children's book author and illustrator. Last February, while researching my new book, Rhino in the House, I flew to Kenya, East Africa, to visit the Lewo Wildlife Conservancy. There, I learned many things about Anna Mertz and the rhino sanctuary that she founded there. I also got to see and learn a lot about other African wildlife. I took many pictures and asked plenty of questions. Here is some of what I learned about animal skulls. Here's the skull of a buffalo. I was very impressed when I first saw this skull today to see how big the horns are and how heavy this thing is. Can you imagine having to carry around horns like this on your head? Nobody knows how old this poor buffalo was when it died. But one thing that happens to most buffaloes when they die <clears throat> is little moths come and they sort of burrow into the covering that's on the top of their horns. And these funny little thready things that you see on here are actually these cocoons of a particular kind of moth. And that's why they hang off of here. And at a certain point when they mature, the little moth comes out the end and crawls away or flies away. And um, they really love to eat the covering on the horns here. So if this sat around for a number of years, what would happen, it would, it would be all bony and white instead of brown like this. Brown and beautiful. So let's see if this guy has any teeth. He's another vegetarian. And you can see his chompers down there. He's got a bunch of big molars too. These are bigger than any teeth we might have. And they are good for chewing on grass, which is what these guys like to eat. And this is a buffalo skull. Maybe you'd like to get one to hang on your wall at home. Here we have the skulls of giraffes. One is a male skull and one is a female skull. You can probably tell the difference by looking. This is the female over here. She's a little bit smaller. And though she has these two bony things on the top of her head like this, just like this one does, she does not have that bony thing right in the middle. It's sort of a horn you see right here. And the, males, the, the male giraffe uses this for fighting with all the other male giraffes he's not getting along with. Um, they also have very nice teeth. They're vegetarians. And they love to browse on the acacia plants. You can see their beautiful clean teeth here. Very big teeth. And though they are friendly, they still might bite if you happen to put your finger in there where it didn't belong. Um, and that's what I have to tell you about skulls of giraffes. I thought you would like to see the skull from a northern African black rhinoceros. Now, when you're looking at him like this, he doesn't look black. But in fact, neither the black rhino or the white rhino are white or black. They're both the same sort of a grayish color. But the white rhino is called a white rhino because someone originally misheard the word wide, which was a, a word used to describe the mouth of the white rhino, because they have a wide mouth used for grazing in the grass and in the tall weeds and things like that. They always have their head down grazing, eating grass, and they have a very wide mouth for that. <clears throat> the black rhino, on the other hand, has what they call a prehensile lip, and it sticks out a little bit, sort of like the beginning of an elephant trunk. And they use that lip to help them when they're trying to get things out of the acacia trees to eat. Around here there are these, these thorny trees called acacia, and rhinos find them very delicious. <clears throat> so they're always eating the acacia, and they lift their heads up to um, eat. You can see they have lots of teeth. The rhinoceros is a vegetarian. You can count all those teeth if you want. And they're mostly molars. They're big grinding teeth. As I said, they're, they're vegetarians, and they only eat plant material, so they need very big teeth to get as much of that as they can in their mouth and chew and grind it all up to digest. This is called the crest of the rhino here, and if you ever see a rhino in a zoo, or maybe you come to Africa and see one of your own, um, their head kind of slopes upward like this into their back, and then their ears are up here. But this is the skull, and it's very, very heavy. It's really hard for me to lift the top and the bottom at the same time. A full-grown rhinoceros weighs about as much as your car when it's alive. And rhinos are also very, very shy. So I could never get this close to a rhino in real life. But since he died, rhinos usually live 30 to 40 years out on the plane. And since this one's been gone quite a long while, they think even maybe 30 or 40 years this rhino's skull has been around. But um, this is as close as I'll ever get to a live rhinoceros. I'm going to go get the white rhino skull now so you can take a look at that one. Here's the skull of a white African rhino. As I said earlier, 
It's not called a white rhino because it's white, as opposed to the black rhino, which is black. They're both gray. The difference is their mouths. Most, the big, biggest difference is their mouths. And I don't know if you can see this here. This is his top jaw, but instead of having that prehensile lip that the black rhino has, his lip is flat and his whole mouth is wider. And that's so when he's grazing in the grass, he can eat more vegetation more quickly that way. The white rhino in nature um, grows bigger than the black rhino. The black rhino is, a, the rhino is a little bit smaller and a little bit shyer. But this is the white rhino, and I'm going to hold him up this way so you can see it from the front. And then I'm going to take the top of the black rhino skull and put that on my other knee. These are both very, very heavy. And you can see if there's any differences. Do you notice that what I said about the crest, about the crest here on the white rhino is a little higher than the black rhino? And maybe you can see the front of the mouth there looks a little bit different. These rhinos have both been dead for a very long time. Um, and if you come here to the Lewa Nature Conservancy in Africa, you can see the great work they're doing to keep the rhinoceros from becoming extinct.